up there. And what's inside a black hole? Are we alone in the universe? Most importantly, can we time travel? No, not yet. Now, some of these questions have been explored in books and comics and theatre and film and TV. Oh, imagine all the things we could do. I think it's time to suit up. Space, the final frontier. To explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Star Trek, I hear you. <laughs> wow, did you know that over 560 people have been up in space? Only 65 of those people have been women, but that number is catching up, starting with the Artemis program that goal is to send the first woman up to the moon by 2024. Now there have been plenty of exceptional women who have been working on the ground as engineers, programmers, researchers and doctors supporting those that are going up into space. But the lady I want to talk about today is May C. Jemison. When May was just seven years old, something really exciting happened. Valentina Tereshkova, a Russian cosmonaut, which is what we call astronauts in Russia, became the first woman to go up into space. This was such an exciting moment in history for all those adventurous girls around the world. It inspired a lot of them, as well as a very famous TV show. May knew instantly that she wanted to go up into space and become an astronaut. Me. <laughs> Now, this famous TV show that she liked was called Star Trek The Next Generation. It was all about space and exploring new worlds. But what was really special about this show was a woman who played a space lieutenant, Michelle Nichols. She was an African-American actress and she played the character of space lieutenant Yuhura. Now, Yuhura comes from the Swahili word, Swahili word, Yuhuru which means freedom. This was the first moment, and a very special moment, that May saw a strong female figure with the same colour skin as her, and it was empowering. There had only been one woman in space so far, and it would be another 15 years before another woman followed. Now this wasn't because there weren't any women interested. No, far from it. There were lots who were interested and training. But in America at NASA, you had to be mil a military test pilot in order to go up into space. And that was a career that wasn't available to women at the time. It wasn't until 1978, when the Anti-Discrimination Act was brought in, that NASA had to change their rules and allow women to go up into space. Now, in the meantime, May didn't stop dreaming. She studied hard and she was interested in chemical engineering and became a doctor. In 1991, the first British person went up into space, Helen Sharman. Finally, the women had beaten the men to it. Then, May aimed her. She joined NASA and she became the first African-American to go up into space. She made it. Yes! Now, let's follow in May's footsteps and see what it takes to be an astronaut. Today, cosmonauts and astronauts work on the International Space Station. Oh look, there it is. <laughs> it's a scientific laboratory that orbits around the Earth. Now, cosmonauts and astronauts from all over the world work together on the ISS.
to increase our knowledge of space travel and to boldly go where no human has gone before. Now, if you want to be a cosmonaut or an astronaut, then you first need to be in top physical condition. You also need to be able to speak and read Russian. This is because most of the modules and operations on the ISS are in Russian, and up until very recently, the only way to get to the ISS was to hitch a ride with the Russians in their rocket called the Soyuz, which means union. So, astronauts, we need to learn a little bit of Russian. Well, let's have a go. Repeat after me. Privyet. That means hello. Da. That means yes. Niet. No. And how about the words that Yuri Gagarin said just before he became the first human to go up into space? Poyak hali. Means let's go. Das Vidanya. That means goodbye. Yeah, I think we did pretty well. Let's keep practicing. Ask your friends or family if they know any Russian and practice with them. Perfect. So, we're fit and healthy. We've started learning Russian. We still have quite some way to go to train to be an astronaut, but we can keep that dream alive by jumping into our imaginations. On the ISS, we'll experience nighttime 16 times a day in 45 minute intervals as we orbit around the Earth every 90 minutes. Think of all the stars we would see. Adventurers and explorers throughout history have used the stars to journey across the Earth's sandy deserts and choppy seas. Did you know that cosmonaut translates to space sailor in Latin? In ancient times, we used the stars to navigate around. We joined the dots in the sky to make pictures. We named these pictures and we gave them stories to retell ancient myths and legends. We call these pictures constellations. Let's do a spacewalk outside and take a closer look. This is a famous group of stars, one of the easiest to spot in the night sky. You can see it from anywhere on Earth. It looks like the outline of a person holding a bow and arrow. It's called Orion named after the hunter in Greek mythology. Astronomers often link a constellation's name to what they think they look like. Take this one in the night sky, a long wiggly line, a head followed by a long tail perhaps. What creature does this remind you of? We call this one by its Latin name, Draco, which means dragon. <laughs> dark night you can see many stars. Have a look tonight and see if you can spot the constellations Orion and Draco. See if you can spot any other constellations and ask your friends and family if they know their names. Looking down at our Earth from space, May realised how very special our little world is. It's going to be a really long time before we're able to go and live on another planet. So it's our responsibility to nurture this Earth and everybody on it. At the time of filming this video about my favourite astronaut, May C. Jemison, there have been protests going on all over the world in support of a movement called Black Lives Matter. This movement 
fight for freedom, liberation and justice. And the world has heard its cry and have come together in support. No one should be treated any differently because of the colour of their skin. We all share this beautiful planet and we must work together to nurture it, protect it and everybody on it. Once I got into space, I was feeling very comfortable in the universe. I felt like I had a right to be anywhere in this universe. That I belonged here as much as any speck of stardust, any comet, any planet. Since retiring from being an astronaut, May has worked as an advocate for science education and set up numerous foundations, including the Earth We Share, where children get to solve global problems. You have the right to be involved. You have something important to contribute and you have to take the risk to contribute it. Don't let anyone rob you of your imagination, your creativity or your curiosity. It's your place in the world. It's your life. Go on and do all you can with it and make it the life you want to live. May is such an inspiring woman. I love telling her story. Ah, oh, it makes me want to become an astronaut. Yes! Keep dreaming everybody. Aim high and maybe one day our dreams will change the world. Whee!